The question we're going to ask in this review mm -hmm. is, did Peter Jackson do too much? Did, was he a little too excessive with this film? I think it's a very good question to ask. Yes, because yeah. this movie is famously very long, and people highly criticize that. I showed you, you had seen these scenes out of context before. Most of, not all of them, but most yeah. of them I'd seen on YouTube, the, yes. the, like the cut scenes. So this yeah. is the first time you've watched the extended cut with 38 minutes of deleted scenes That was a shockingly it. long movie. Yes, it, longer, but it feels longer. What is the runtime of the extended cut? Because the, the the standalone movie is three hours, right? Uh, the standalone movie is three hours, eight minutes. So we're talking so about plus close, 38. Close yeah. to four hours. What the hell just dropped? It was the Lola bunny. Lola, no! I love this movie. I do too. I was, as you can tell, I saw my Starlog magazine. I was, <laughs> this is like one of the movies I can remember just slavishly following the production yeah, of it. Yeah, yeah. It was a big deal when it came out. And it was good because he was putting out those production diaries and whatnot. Mm -hmm. So this is a movie you could follow. It was also right after Lord of the Rings. So everybody wanted to know, what is this guy going to do next? And yes, we were all hype on Lord of the Rings. Mm -hmm. Peter Jackson could do no wrong. I had gone back and I watched some of his horror stuff and fell in love Pretty with fun, it. Pretty fun, yeah. Yeah, so I'm just like, I am all on board for the next Peter Jackson thing. And then he said he was doing King Kong, and I love King Kong. Probably my favorite giant monster. The 30s I, movie. Yes. Yeah. King Kong in general, I like. Yeah. I've okay. talked about how the 70s King Kong. Yeah, you Kong, like the 70s King the Kong. The 70s King yeah. Kong is really creepy, but I like it yeah. for some reason. Mm. King Kong lives not so much. I wasn't a big fan of King Kong versus Godzilla, but I've seen the Japanese edit. It's I love that movie. The Japanese version of that yes. movie is great. I mean, yeah. King Kong still looks stupid in it. Of course. Uh, but, but I've it, actually also gone back and watched King Kong Escapes. I've never seen that. That's one. a fun one. Okay, that's need, a fun. I need movie. to check that out. Yeah. And Jurassic Park kind of was like the modern King Kong in a lot of ways. Even referenced the movie. In the yeah. Film. So what they got really, in there, King Kong? They didn't really yeah. have to make a modern King Kong, but they did it anyway. I'm glad they did. Yeah, and I mean, it's surprised it didn't happen earlier, but it almost did. It almost did. And mm. Peter Jackson was involved with it early on yep. it's crazy to think he did frighteners then the lord of the rings trilogy yeah and there's a lot of stuff behind the lord of the rings trilogy and how that was you know going on and, and yeah. how it could have changed behind the scenes. originally it was going to be like two films i think yeah. and then they got involved and said no it has to be three they famously pushed the production back because they had to grow the Shire. Peter Jackson almost did this movie in 1996. Yes. And it was pretty different. There was going to be Carnotauruses. Mm -hmm. There was going to be a lot of different animals. Uh, but a lot of the creature design that they initially went for in the in that back in the 90s, they transferred over to this film. Okay. Famously, there's this big statue of Kong fighting the three T-Rexes, I think they were called yes. back then. Yeah. And they still have it, I think, in Weta. Like oh, they walk, do? I believe they do. Oh, that's but, cool. Uh, yeah, this movie was a long time in the making, and it wasn't until, you know, you proved yourself on this little Lord of the Rings yes. thing that will give you King Kong. But, uh, yeah, it's it's very interesting to look back at. We were talking about this last night. Yeah. Jurassic World is almost 10 years old. This movie was 10 years old when Jurassic World came out. Yeah. And now it's 17. Yes. Like, it's getting close to, like, its 20th anniversary, which yeah. is... Shocking, but uh, <laughs> yeah. Second best King Kong movie ever made. Yeah, probably. Yeah, yeah. yeah I yes, give it, you that. yes, it is. I do love this movie. Mm. Uh, and I love the passion he put into it because it's his favorite movie is the original King Kong. You can he, tell. Yeah, he got yeah. to remake it. Uh, could you imagine remaking like a great original, like a, a film in your own vision? Like how do I... I couldn't do it. No. I couldn't do it because there's no way to improve upon Roadhouse. It's already perfect. <laughs> okay. So if someone said, Tony, you're going to remake Roadhouse, I'm like, I don't know how to do it. I I couldn't. It's impossible. And, and not only Roadhouse, but the lore of Roadhouse 2. Shut the... F <laughs> no. There is no Roadhouse 2. Anyway. Uh, but Roadhouse the final chapter. <laughs> but somehow, Peter Jackson, like, you're going to remake King Kong. And he's like, yeah, I'm in. Uh, not the yeah. first time directors remade a movie they love. John Carpenter got to do the thing. Uh, uh, Peter uh, Steven Spielberg, War of the Worlds. Yes. Uh, yeah. There's loads. Yeah. There's this was an incredible film to like watch the production of. Mm -hmm. Uh, to like read the behind the scenes. I think he talked about like the '90s one. Even he admits probably would have sucked. There were like wacky jokes in it. And oh whatnot. really? Yeah. I did not know that. Yeah. I think they were trying to be more like an Indiana Jones thing in the other version. Sounds fun to me. Yeah. I yeah. mean you know, that. That model worked for the Mummy movies, so... It's working for Jurassic World. Yeah. I mean, those movies are raking in, like, billions. Yeah. I do wonder, though, because this movie plays it more... 
So this movie comes off more like it's funny we talk about Jurassic Park. It actually reminds me more of the Lost World. Yeah. <laughs> like the jungle and the yeah. the more uh viciousness of the animals. And uh, we'll get to the creature design later on because I, I also want to connect that back to the newer Jurassic Park movies. Yeah. But uh yeah, you know, Jurassic Park was a big thing in the nineties, and then of course you've got this at uh, ninety six before Lost World even come out. Yeah. So they probably were like, let's combine raiders with the special effects. That makes a lot of sense. Of yeah. Jurassic Park and Redo King yeah. Kong. Yeah, it makes sense. Yeah, we watched the very, very long version. Yeah. Uh, and we have some opinions on it. I, yeah. And I remember people giving me a lot of shit for loving this movie because it was so long. Well, people complained about it back then. Yeah, which... as I'm old, as I've matured and gotten older, looking back, I I still love this movie. Yeah. But now that the hype has died down and everything, I'm looking at it now and I'm like, yeah, they could have shaved a lot out of this. Yeah. They could have really trimmed out a lot of this to make it a better a better experience for sure. Like because yeah. the funny thing I talked to you about is it's not like you can take out a bad scene. It's yeah. that all of these greatly made scenes are making for a poorer narrative. Mm. And I think that was Peter Jackson, not necessarily because you can see he's throwing everything he can at the movie yeah. and it's cool. But unlike the Lord of the Rings, where you've got three, three act structured yeah. movies that are, these characters are being developed over the course well, of several different struggles. Yeah. It, but this movie's just a remake of King. Well, that's the thing. Like, I think <laughs> we've learned now, especially from the Hobbit, mm. like Lord of the Rings. Those are really long books. So yeah. you can condense and move things around mm -hmm. and yeah. you can make long movies out of them. Yeah. And this is this should have been a warning for us with The Hobbit. It's like, hey, King Kong's not a long movie. Yeah. This didn't need to be that stretched no. out with these many characters. And then The Hobbit comes along and it's like, this did not need to be this long, buddy. Well, especially the third one. I think oh, that yeah. that's, that's Peter Jackson's Achilles heel. Yeah. It might be like... And I get it. Making the long movie, making the big long movie, he normalized the three hour movie. Multiplexes will show it more. It'll run longer. It'll push all these other movies out of theaters because people want to go see the big movie. Well, I think there's a caveat to all that if you release it at a good time because this movie yeah. came out the very end of 2005. Yes. Like December, December. where December. nothing was competing against it. Chronicles of Narnia. Did that come out December? Yes. I saw both of those in theaters. Yeah, I remember all my friends were t hyped for Narnia. I'm like, that looks like a poor man's Lord of the Rings. I'm going to go see King Kong. <laughs> yeah, well. I have since seen... <laughs> See, here's my problem with, uh, here's the problem I have with Narnia. Okay. And I'll show you when it came out. So Narnia comes out, uh, -huh. uh and in high school, my hair and everything, I looked like, Mr. you looked like Mr. Tumnus. I looked like Mr. Tumnus in high school. Uh -huh. You did look like that. Everyone called me Mr. Tumnus. Oh, okay. And then I eventually watched <laughs> the movie. I'm like, I'm a fucking goat man to you people. Well, what epic movie came out like right after that though, right? Oh, Remember that? I actually, and then don't worry. At, years later, I embraced it and I was drunk Mr. Tumnus for okay. Halloween. Right. <laughs> I walked around with like the horns. I got it. I got it. <laughs> so I was just like, fuck, I'm not a goat. I'm going to go see the gorilla movie. <laughs> <laughs> um, I remember seeing the trailer for this and getting hyped. Really cool, really dark, really fun. I remember not being too uh, sold on King Kong's design, but that's fine. They changed it, yeah. Yeah, which is funny, this making of King Kong book. They still got the tooth thing. Yeah, yeah. hold on, let me find it. it was, I was skimming through it The earlier. video game you were talking about also kind of still has the uh, yeah. the older, unrevised look of Kong. Yes, which I have the, I have the video game right mm -hmm. there. But yeah, it's just like the final shot of Kong and it's with the tooth sticking out. Yeah, I remember that image was everywhere. Yeah, in promotion yeah, for the movie. Yeah, and then they, re, they remodeled it. Uh, they do have some of the updated designs Why here. did they remodel it? Was it after like people complaining online or just like... I don't know if it's... Maybe they just changed their mind. Because remember, um, Gollum... By the way, skimming through this, this movie, you're going to think it's all digital. A lot of their giant sets and no, miniatures. It, it looks good. S yeah. Some of the green screen and blue screen might yeah. not look good today. Okay, okay, you know, but when they're on a set, like, look how big that wall set Pretty is. Pretty cool. Yeah. Uh, but anyway, um, yeah, I remember seeing the trailer and then, like, months later, like, even the poster, and then they changed it. Mm. But he did something similar with Lord of the Rings. Gollum looked very different. I did not know that. What did he look like? Well, Gollum in Fellowship of the Ring, they never do a close-up on him. He's, like, more brown. Right? Yeah, or, like, his face is just shaped different. If you look at Fellowship of the Ring, the few glimpses you get, he looks very different. Okay, okay. Uh, and they were going to go with that design, but I guess when they were doing the second one, they just changed it. More expression for Andy Serkis to act in, probably. Probably, probably. Yeah. But um, I like the design they went through. He's, like, basically just a giant silverback gorilla. 
Which is the only time that they've really embraced the movement and like, yeah. you know, gorilla. Really tried to make it a gorilla. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I saw it in theaters and I have something to say about that when we get to the end of the movie. Yeah. Okay. I loved it. Yeah. I, I really, there were people complaining. Yeah. They were like, this movie's too fucking long, just like War of the Worlds. I'm so bored of this shit. <laughs> I'm like, dude. I feel like War of the Worlds was long. They hated it too, though. Yeah. Back then and even today, maybe. Although today we don't have as good as movies as shit like this anymore. Yeah. Uh, people would complain about shit for like yeah, it the, was weird. the dumbest of reasons. Yeah. Like War of the Worlds was one. King Kong was probably one of the bigger ones. War of the Worlds does have a big issue at the end. It's but the, yes. But that and one issue at the end does yeah. not mean the whole movie is bad. There's little things, but for the most part, I like that. And I don't movie. think it's a. I, I'm not saying these are flawless. I'm just yeah. saying like, you know, the majority of which people. Yeah. I don't remember people jumping for joy over King Kong, mm. and I liked it a lot. Yeah. But I remember people being like the over long, kind of like you know how people complain about Titanic's three hours of watching a boat sink. Yeah, like well, it's not three hours of watching a boat sink. But, but you know yeah. what I mean, right? Yes. Like they they would equate similar. If you things. want to know more about Titanic, we have a review for Titanic on this channel. <laughs> I like how it shows you the animals first, and in it's the like, zoo, yeah. are we in the jungle? And then you find out it's just the zoo. Mm -hmm. Uh, but yeah, we see it's the Great Depression. We see what's going on. There's like prohibition and whatnot. Hard to work. Yeah, people are like starving and whatnot. Mm -hmm. It's setting up New York. New York looks beautiful. Yeah, very A lot good. of it is big sets with miniatures good and digital enhancements. They had to like make New York, 1930s New York in the computer. It took longer for them to make their digital model of the Empire State Building than it did to make the Empire State Building. <laughs> oh, really? That was like a thing I read. It took them like 18 months and the Empire State Building took like 13 months. That's insane. <laughs> Wow. Because they had to that. digitally make the building and then make it look like the 30s. Okay. Oh, um, okay. Yeah, yeah. That, that would probably be a pain. Yeah, process. so like yeah. it's a really great setting at this old timey song. We're seeing like the weird entertainment they used to watch back then. A lot of like plays and, yeah, plays and circus and dancing style and stuff. stuff. Yeah. Before you had YouTube, you had to go somewhere and watch people do weird shit. <laughs> yeah. And I just watch it. <laughs> but yeah, we get introduced to Anne. Mm -hmm. uh, who's an actress. She's very into the writer, Jack Driscoll. Yeah. Her playhouse is under hard times. We thought this part was kind of mean, where she's like, yes. hey, old guy, you're the only family I have. And she's like, have you eaten today? To show, like, people are, like, starving. And obviously he's like, no, because no, I, I, you know, I want to make sure that I don't, like, waste all my money. Yeah, and then she's like, come on, take me to dinner. And it's like, you bitch. He just said, like, you know why he's not eating. We were talking about, like, 90 years ago. Yeah. I mean, like, I, I definitely. Maybe they went to the soup kitchen. And it's no use. The show, it's over. It's done. Yeah, everybody's fired. And then the guy's going back to Chicago. And he's like, I'm going back to Chicago. Goodbye. Yeah. Uh, and it's all sad. It's like, okay, we're moving along. We, we, we've now been introduced to our main character. And we get the driving motivation of like the struggle that she's going with and what she needs to do. Yes. And, yeah, I get it, yeah. uh, and then she meets another guy. And then she's like, hey, I want to audition for the Driscoll part, the, the Driscoll play. And he's like, we already gave it to someone else, lady. Yeah. He's the only one who's talking old timey. Yeah, everybody else is kind of... <laughs> Yeah. Only uh, like only Jack Black kind of talks old timey. Sort this guy's of. all old timey. Yeah, yeah. Uh, by the way, uh, the one thing I like about this guy is so every in the movie is just like Naomi Watts. Naomi Watts is a gorgeous woman. Yeah, yeah. but they're yeah. like, oh, Anne, you're so beautiful. You're beautiful, Anne. You're beautiful. Even Kong is signing beautiful. And this is the only guy in the movie that goes, you're not bad looking. Oh, yeah. That guy does, <laughs> that like, guy does say that. I'm like, what a fucking Chad. That's, that guy's <laughs> negging her hard. That is funny. And then he gives her the instructions to go. Yeah, to he's like, hey, the strip go club. here. Yeah. Show your tits and get out of town. It is. <laughs> I do like that uh, they they set up her character really well. Yeah. She's not just like a random woman. She is actually someone yeah. that's fallen on hard times. They sell the reason she goes to the island. Yeah. And I like uh, the reference to the original movie that we'll get to later on. Yeah, yeah. That uh, shows how they changed some stuff up. But yeah, like. Yes. Well, I forgot. The old guy is giving us a lot of exposition about Anne. Yeah, very quickly. Yeah, because I guess yeah. they were like, oh, wait, we made her a loner. And he's like, everyone always gives up on you, Anne. You're always so sad. I'll it's be like, honest with you. It's pretty decent exposition. Though, I guess so. It they, feels a little weird. Was, but it, Yeah, but for a character that's yeah. just there to like yeah. push yeah. her along. Uh, we meet Carl Denham. Yes. Who is showing uh, the studio stock footage of animals. Yeah, well, well, there, he's supposed to be showing them He's supposed to be showing a them movie a movie. For $40,000. Yeah, and which, they're like, where's our movie? It's like, well, you know, our actress, we pushed it back to get her teeth fixed, and uh, we're going to go to yeah, an so island. we can go to an island. Yeah. And it's like, I'm sorry, <laughs> island? It's like, yeah. yes, we're going to go to an island. 
The uh, script's been rewritten. I found his fucking map. <laughs> I have I have had the opposite of this. Oh, really? Okay. When we did the AVGN trespasser, uh, when I was a uh, trespasser, sorry, trust passer, okay. trespasser, when I was um working on that, and I was coming up with ideas for it, I remember like with uh, Ryan and Justin up there, and I'm like, yeah, we're gonna make it look like uh, the Nerd goes to an island. We'll just film it in the park. And some of it we did film in the park. Okay. And then like this is the uh, so in this movie, like you're not going to an island. You're ridiculous. Okay. And when I'm when I'm pitching that to them, Ryan's so like, you I know an island in the Delaware we could go to. And I'm like, we're going to an island now. <laughs> so, so okay. Yeah, I'm the okay. reverse Carl Denham. I'm like, I'm like, I was gonna do the super cheap. We're now on an island. Okay. Yeah, okay. All right. <laughs> Carl like gets kicked out, and they're mm -hmm. like, what the fuck are we gonna do? And they're like, we'll just sell his footage. I've always remembered his like getting rid of the uh, yeah whatever whiskey and like listening. Yes, to and his assistant is Colin Hanks, mm. Tom Hanks' son. My second favorite Tom Hanks' son. My first favorite is Chet Hanks, yeah, the see. creator of White Boy Summer. Bad gal, white dan dada. Rude boy, it's a white boy summer. That's a that. Now, a lot of people were <laughs> upset about White Boy Summer, but they always forget that in the same video or a follow-up video, he also announced that it was also Black Queen Summer. Oh. And people always forget that part because mm. Chet Hanks loves everyone. I would have loved see. Chet Hanks in this movie. I think he would have done very well. Fun, for sure. And he's like, yeah, you lied to the actress, right? And he's like, no. But we're not going to Singapore. It's like, you yeah. just want to lie to her, you idiot. <laughs> and Carl Denham is just a total asshole. He'll do anything to get his movie done. I like that. I didn't realize before he like leaves with all the footage. He stole so their like footage. <laughs> they paid the money to have it. And I didn't realize that either. He's got like all the reels. Yeah. And he's just like gone. Uh, but yeah, as they leave and get away yeah. from the thing. Which I feel like a lot of this could have maybe been trimmed down where it could have just been like the original where it's like, I'm going to an island. I'm yeah. a rich guy or something. Maybe I, one thing that we did talk about here, um, this cut of the movie, yeah. the longer cut of the movie. Yeah. And I mentioned to you before we really got into yeah. it, I said, this movie doesn't really have an antagonist. Carl Denham. In the extent of, he is kind of the antagonist. He's the villain. In the extended cut, he is more of an antagonist. He's more of a pretty terrible yeah. guy yes and uh, I, I think one thing that i could definitely see if this film had come out in the completed cut mm. the fact that he doesn't get any comeuppance yeah i think that might have been why they trimmed a lot of that out because you know you talk about greed and shit yeah. we'll go on to later this guy the man. theatrical cut and like even the scene is set up that he's just overly ambitious well, he's also a thief. Yes. He's just uh, stolen. But the Senate cut really, and we'll get into it, the Senate cut really shows that he is a bad guy. Yeah. He's just insane. He's just mean. Uh, but yeah, I do like the little reference for the fans. Love it, yeah. Face a size for him. Yes, she is, but she is doing a picture with RKO. Cooper, Cooper huh? Might have known. <laughs> yeah, that's great. And that's fun for fans, but I can see people in the audience going, who? Oh. <laughs> yeah, but I also think it helps this movie like have an excuse to like yeah. flesh out how they got to the island, yeah. which is really just they need this to build these characters up. Yes, yeah. uh, the only character that's not really being built up yet is Jack, who we don't meet till we don't meet later. him until a little bit later. He goes to the strip club to get a girl right. who will fit into whatever's uh, outfits, and then Maureen's he sees outfit. Anne. Yeah. And he follows her, and she's, like, trying to steal food, and he, like, gets her out of trouble. Mm -hmm. uh, then he takes her to dinner where she's, like, stuffing her face because she's super starving because it's the Great Depression. He uh, basically is just like, um, you're you're so sad looking and whatnot. You got to be in this movie. She's like, I'm a comedian. He's like, no, you're not. You're pathetic. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, he uh, convinces her to be in the movie because he says Jack Driscoll is writing it. Yeah, which she's a big fan of. Yes, she's a big fan of She's like, I'm sorry. Did you uh, say Jack Driscoll? She's like, you know him? We meet Engelman, played by Thomas Kretschmann, fresh off of Resident Evil Apocalypse. You mean Ain't Captain Englehorn? Captain Englehorn, who is very <laughs> different from the Captain Englehorn in the original. Yeah. Because uh, that's the thing. Jack Driscoll is like the first mate in the original, and they change him to a playwriter. Yeah, there, and then yeah. Englehorn is kind of a mixture of the original Jack and the original but then you also got to throw in there the Bruce Baxter like character. Yes, it's, yes, he's coming up. Yeah. Um, and Anglehorn is upset that they're not paid, and he's like, "You'll accept a check, right?" He's and like, "When I get my first thousand dollars." He's yeah. like, "Do I have a choice?" Mm -hmm. uh, but, you know, Thomas Kretschmann, he's been in a lot of things lately. He was wasted as uh, what's his face in the Avenger movies. He shows up as like a high ranking Hydra guy in Age of Ultron, and then he gets killed off camera, and it's like, huh. That guy's like a big character in the comics, and he was relegated to one yeah, scene. Yeah, I don't even remember that. Good for him. Yeah. <laughs> um, we meet Jack Driscoll, who's mm -hmm. Adrian Brody. This is when Adrian Brody was big. He like he got an Oscar yeah, he a few was years coming prior. up. 
for the piano, which we actually might have. Mm -hmm. uh, no, not the piano. The pianist. Yeah. The piano is a different. The movie. piano. <laughs> the piano is Anna Paquin, who won an Oscar oh, when I she did was not eight years old. That. Okay. Yeah. Uh, two movies. About, so that's the trick. Just make a movie about a piano, and it works. It'll work. <laughs> uh, but yeah, he's only written a few pages for the script. Mm -hmm. And he's like, what the fuck? We're writing a movie here. He's like, sorry, you didn't pay me. Fuck you. Yeah. And I like this whole thing where like Jack Black is just like stalling. Oh, yeah. Where he's trying to write the check. He's like, let me write you a check. He's like, uh, he's like, you wrote two grand. Like the word two grand. He's like, ah. Oh. He's ripping it up because he sees the boat is taking off. <laughs> what an asshole. He's like waiting to jump. Yeah, and he To doesn't. get back. Yeah. And he's just like, see, the theater's not for you. You belong in movies. He's like, I love the theater. And I love when, I love that because like, again, I kind of relate to Carl here. He's like, nah, if you loved it, you would have jumped. Dude, yeah. they make so many jokes about this guy early on. And I never viewed him as evil until like, yeah. <laughs> I've watched this cut of the movie. Oh, I kind of agree with that though. Like I love, I've done a lot of shit for movies. Like yeah, if you loved it, you would have jumped. I get it's fun, jumped. it's funny, but like when we get to the island, yeah. this guy. But you're right. We do see Bruce Baxter played yeah. by Kyle Chandler yeah, in his first King Kong continuity. Yeah, yeah. They're showing Jack his quarters. Mm -hmm. um, we get a cameo <laughs> from the Sumatran rat monkey. Yeah. Uh, which is a reference to Evil Dead, which takes place on Skull Island. They also have Evil Dead. You mean? Uh, oh, no. Uh, de dead Alive. Dead yeah, Alive. Brain Dead. Alive. dead. Brain uh, Dead, Dead Alive. So you also get the chloroform reveal here. Yes. Uh, and they tell Jack, you got to hang out in one of these cages. <laughs> like, Because <laughs> that's the thing. These people, they kind of like, they capture They catch animals, animals for and zoos them, and stuff. Yeah. yeah. But man, they're worried about King Kong. They don't know how bad that rat monkey is. That can yeah. cause zombies. <laughs> We never see that they rat monkey. They actually mention Sumatra again later on in the movie. They do? While they're on the boat. I believe they do. Huh. They're like, looks like it's out past Sumatra or something. Oh, like wow. I didn't, I didn't catch that yeah. uh, this time. Uh, so here's a thing where things are a little too excessive and he's trying to do too much. The introduction to the Jimmy subplot. Uh, yeah. With well, Jamie Bell. I'm Billy fine. Elliot. I'm fine with both Jimmy and Captain Hayes, but I think the way they resolve where yeah. this is it's not actually a resolution it like fizzles out it mounts to nothing it's actually a little bit morbid yeah and you, then yeah. again like this is a character who just disappears in the third act yeah he's, he's the nick van owen of, yeah of king kong <laughs> yeah he just kind of goes away so they're spending like so much time with jimmy and like we get introduced like yeah the first mate hayes like found him in the the shipping he's thing. hanging out there and we get like a mystery of where did he come from he's like, stowaway and he's also trying to be like a father figure yeah and teach him to like remember he stole the fucking book from the library yeah or, that comes up but it's just yeah. like i don't care and it just drags the movie i think out. it was sweet and fine but it it I th if it had gone somewhere yeah. it would be a little more i think know. it was just peter jackson won it Jamie Bell to be in it because he was big on Billy Elliot. He was a nice young rising sure, star. Sure, yeah, 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 yeah. And he's just like, I'm gonna write a character Jimmy for you, and he's gonna slow the fucking movie. I don't think down. anybody liked the Jimmy guy. I think Captain Hayes was pretty cool, but like, yeah, but yeah. he's stuck with the Jimmy subplot. So I just really don't like. I'm just like, you could have cut this out easily. Sure, yeah. You could have just never written in the first place. I kind of prefer Lumpy and Choi. <laughs> yeah, Lumpy and Choi are great. <laughs> I actually really like, uh, I, I even said this when we were yeah. watching the movie, I think this is Andy Serkis' best, like, actual performance that's not uh, motion capture. And I, and I said you He's better, got a, better than eye. Alfred? Yes, better than Alfred <sighs> in The Batman. Better uh, than Claw? Yeah, I didn't even remember that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, yeah, 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 Claude. Yeah, it's better, way better than that. Yeah, okay. Yeah. yeah, you know what? I'm Team Lumpy. Who's on the cover? Lumpy's a cover? badass. The way yeah. he goes out, what if you had That's it, the thing. Andy Andy Circus plays two characters. He plays Kong. Yeah, which plays, a lot of people don't uh, know about that. Yeah, anymore. and he plays, uh, what you call it? Lumpy. Lumpy. Yeah, this is his first uh, ape, and he would go on to play other apes. Yeah. Yeah, so yeah. we see the sound guy, and he's talking about how sound equipment. You've captured the voice of the common people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's actually a really <laughs> funny scene. So she's meeting the crew, and she assumes the sound guy is uh, Jack Driscoll. Right, right. Yeah. And she's like, You're amazing. I love your work. And the guy's like, Really? Which, yeah, I love. She goes, You've captured the voice of the common like, people. Well, thank you. And he thinks it's a sound recording. <laughs> and then she starts talking about like the writing, not realizing the real Jack's behind her. Right, yeah. But I'm like, this is funny. And then she goes, you look nothing like your uh, picture. Yeah. And I'm like, so it's like, how'd you, con how'd you confuse wait, them? Because yeah. they look nothing alike. The, I, the glasses. Maybe she's like, I don't know, dude. And by the way, she says that guy's like way better looking. 
Which is a little insane. And I'm like, oh, well, then, but then she's into Jack afterwards? <laughs> I do feel like uh, the extended cut of the movie severely dampens the relationship between Anne and Jack because yeah. so much shit happens in between them actually interacting with each other. Yes, yes. It makes and it a, a little harder to buy into. And we're getting to the extended scenes that a lot of that is on the island. Mm -hmm. But yeah, like, I think that might be another thing. People weren't really sold on the romance between them. Well, Jack's just like, this is the only person that gives a shit about my work. Yeah. <laughs> so I've got to save Anne. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I never really got into their relationship. Like, I, I know she needs to fall in love with a human, I guess. I bought it more in the theatrical cut. But yeah. even then, we've talked about how it can cut yeah. scenes out. To and I get, like, the movie. original, you just need the damsel to fall in love with the sure, guy. Sure, but... And, and I believe the romance in the 70s. Because oh, Jeff... I, don't, I need to rewatch that. Because, yeah. I mean, Jeff Bridges and... Uh, you, you, you mentioned that's Jessica Lang. Jessica yeah. Lang. They were both ridiculously good looking, so, of course, they would be into All each I other. I remember in that movie is bearded Jeff Bridges looking up while the <laughs> helicopters are shooting. Maybe that's because that's also the beginning of King Kong Lives. Yes. You don't and, remember him shirtless? He was in good shape back then. And that. Jessica Lang, Jesus Christ. Mm. Watch our episode on that. I remember Stay Hungry more than I do King <laughs> Kong. <laughs> This scene could have been cut. We have uh, Jimmy drawing on Baxter's posters. Yeah, why is that in there? Well, I guess it's there to show that Bruce Baxter's a narcissist and Jimmy's a little shit. Yeah, but we kind of get that because he's an actor. We don't need it. Yeah, he's already However, like, hey, mister, help me get my bag. I so. would have accepted it because there there is a shot where he draws a mustache on him and Baxter's mad, but then he likes the mustache. You know they should have done at the end when they... Yes, it would have been <laughs> funny if when we meet him at the end... He's got like, the big mustache. Months later, yeah. he had a mustache, but then they don't do it. Mm-hmm. So I'm like, you could just cut this out. You it would have been this. perfect because I think he's even wearing that safari style outfit in that poster where they, yeah. and he's that's like what he's got on stage. I love the poster. It just says Dame Tamer. Dame and Tamer. I'm like, I want to watch Dame Tamer. What was the other one? Tribal something? I forget. Raiders or something? Yeah. We're filming on an island now. When did this happen? Jack Black is telling him about the island. Yeah, they all kind of gang up on him. Like, where the fuck are we going, buddy? Well, no, before yeah. that, he's just like, let me tell you the name. And then... Oh, the Skull Island with the typing. Yeah, you Peter, don't like the slow-mo. Peter Jackson's choppy slow-mo. I hate the choppy slow-mo. You, you said he'd use He uses it. it so much here. You said he'd used it in Lord of the Rings, and I didn't remember. But he does use it in the Mines of Moria and yeah. other places for when the goblin orcs like yeah. start coming out. But here, he used, like this whole scene is choppy slow-mo. And again, this scene could have been sped up a little bit. They use it a lot when the natives come, too. It's yeah. interesting that they... Maybe, maybe he just wanted this movie to be long. <laughs> so it really feels like they're padding it. I'm like, yeah, yeah. this didn't need to be yeah, here. It's, it's interesting. The crew gets really mad at Carl for wanting to go to Skull Island. And Lumpy tells him the whole story. He's like, yeah, we met a guy. He was adrift. And yeah, it's pretty cool. Yeah, and he's like, he talked about this island that had a giant wall. And mm. it was really scary. Nobody or whatnot. knew who built it or where. Like yeah, again, this scene could have been reworked a little different. I don't know if we needed this. Like, well, they need to know that they're... Maybe they don't need to know they're going to Skull Island. Yeah, like, I mean, you don't really need them yeah. to know they're going there. Mm -hmm. It could have just been a coincidence. I don't think we have to set up the legend of Skull Island. Jack and Anne, they make out. They do, which I forgot about being in this movie. Yes, and while they're making out, we get more bad slow motion of them getting a telegram that oh, yeah. Carl is wanted by the authorities. Yes. Yeah. Good luck getting them now. <laughs> <sighs> it's just the, the bad slow motion. I'm like, stop it. Yeah, I had forgotten that he'd used it that much. I like when he drops the map into the water. It's a pretty cool shot. Yes. I, I like the mystery around all that stuff. Yeah, we never find out where he gets the map. Well, same in the original. This, I think Son of Kong, we find the guy who gave Carl the map. Yeah, I I don't think Son of Kong would be that out of the realm of possibility of doing a sequel to this movie. Because you could add a lot of shit yeah. in that. Like, but um, this is another scene. So like, this is when Peter Jackson in his career, it's like every action scene has to be this like amazing, complicated they action scene. They go a really long time doing this whole, we're, we're approaching Skull Island. Yeah, like, uh, they're they, going into the fog. They're doing like the uh, 20 knots or whatever. I think they could have just crashed into the thing. And yeah, yeah. Fine. So then there is some like, the, the ship gets blown around, but it goes on for a while. Mm. And you're right, the green screen here looks a little weird. It's because some of the lighting looks like they're really well lit, but it's at yeah. night in a storm with like yeah, wind. I guess like, he like colored them differently so they stand out from the background instead of being all blue. Yes. But then it just looks unnatural yeah, it and does weird. Look, it looks, I didn't realize how, I, I forgot that this movie came out in 2005. I thought it was much, well, it's, yeah. <laughs> That's a while ago. So, yeah. like, I get why it doesn't 
that doesn't hold up as quite as well as it. Yeah, but I'm thinking of like other movies that um we did like, like Mary Shelley, huh? Like Narnia. Yeah, no, 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 I'm thinking of like Mary Shelley's Frankenstein opens up with like a ship crashing, and that one's done pretty quick. Oh it's, yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, they do this really long. Yeah, over, they, it goes on. Captain a little, Hayes is doing the fucking thing. And yeah, like, then like, Jimmy's up top going ah, on the crow's nest. Like, yeah, like, throwing around and it smashes up. On yeah, the rocks. it was it's a like, little excessive. Yeah, it's excessive. Yeah. is the word. We haven't even gotten on to the island. We're still. Yet. This yeah. is our first like big action scene, I guess. But probably it's just like, like forty minutes into the movie. Yeah, it's like yeah. we're not we're not even there yet, and like all right, all right. All right, the, I didn't come to see the boat crash. <laughs> um, I do one thing I will really like about this is we get to see the name Skull Island put to good use because there's all of those carved like skulls and yes, faces. Yes, I do like the everything. the design of like the rocks all. Have I had faces forgotten in about them. that until we were watching it. I was like, oh yeah, that is pretty cool. Jimmy's reading yeah. Heart of Darkness, and then he has this long ass scene of him quoting Heart of Darkness. Yeah. And it's like, just get him on the island, goddammit. This movie's so overly It's indulgent. very over the top. Than what you would expect, like, just a remake of King Kong. Yeah, I, well, that's the thing. He probably got a little big head from the Lord of the They're Rings. They're taking it very seriously. It's the Lost World Jurassic Park effect where, like, the first Jurassic Park is just, it's cool, It's but it's mainly fun. You yeah. know, like, Lost World was, like, serious. Yeah. Big game hunter. Like, you know what I mean? This movie feels like more of that. Yeah. So, and now they're throwing in, like, Heart of Darkness. Yeah, I want to have a Heart of Darkness speech over this whole thing. That's said. I know it's like, oh my god. Yeah. What about the story? Yeah, can you <laughs> like, just speed up a little bit. Yeah, yeah. Again, this a lot of this is tied into the fucking Jimmy Hayes story, and it's like no one cares about Jimmy. We'll get to where that ends up. Uh, I will say the all version. This is in the trailer and the video game. Uh, but all versions cut out her on the rocks where he goes scream at. Oh yeah, yeah, for yeah. Your yeah. Life. Yeah. Uh, which makes sense because then it happens again. So mm -hmm. doing it twice. This is the one time where Peter Jackson held some restraint and left something out of the sure, movie. Sure. Out of both versions of the movie, he left them out. So yeah, they get to uh, the village and there's beautiful miniatures on a blue yeah, screen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is when he still, Weta and them did miniatures. Maybe just one like of the last Wendell movies. And whatnot. Yeah, yeah. Maybe one of the last films to use that extensive amount yeah. of Yeah. Uh no, Nolan uses a lot of miniatures in his films. Really? Yeah. There's a lot of stuff. But it's just like Chicago. Yeah, no, but I'm saying like there's even in those scenes, there's a ton of miniatures. He rebuilt that, those that's cities. the thing. He I does it he does it so well you don't realize they're miniatures. <laughs> yeah. Like even in Inception, that big like building and stuff they shoot at the yeah, end, yeah, that's yeah. a big miniature, but people don't realize it. Wow. Uh, and, then, and then sometimes Nolan will just crash a giant plane through a building yeah. because it's cheaper. That was my favorite thing with Tenet. It, they were I didn't gonna, see that movie, but it's way. not that good. Yeah. But Tenet, they were going to build like miniatures and stuff with the plane crashing. And then he realized it was just cheaper to buy an old plane <laughs> and crash it through a, a, like a demolished building. <laughs> I wonder what he's going to do like next. Oh, he's doing an Oppenheimer biopic. About the guy that made. Yeah. Oh, OK. Yeah. Well, that'll be interesting. So the idea I heard years back it's like they built this wall because th the humans there whatever the civilization was who originally built this and all the ruins on the island and shit, yeah, yeah like i guess like the wildlife just got too out of control they had to and they away. weren't able to, to survive on the that island sense. that makes perfectly fine sense so i guess they built this giant wall but the thing is like they built the wall but now they're like so secluded from like the food and yeah stuff. they're on the rocks so man you see that they just have like fish that they're eating like yeah. that's the only thing that they can like eat yeah but like, i think the idea is that they've like regressed because it's just generations of people starving right which is an interesting idea yeah um i do think the entire sequence with the natives yeah. is great yeah. like when you first meet them because it's pretty scary and they all have like an odd color because they knew you they couldn't do they couldn't do it. black people yeah uh they were afraid to make it any actual race so all the i didn't know any of this by the yeah, way so like, all the natives they have this kind of like this blackish brownish gray kind of i never ca them. caught on to that but i did notice when the, the kid is like well i completely forgot about the candy bar thing oh right? yeah he tries to give the kid a yeah, candy bar i i completely forgot because I think there are scenes in the original King Kong where they do use blackface. And there are I, a lot of black people in the original, but there might have been some. Well, yeah. they definitely use it in a. Uh, oh, King Kong vs. Godzilla. Yeah, yeah. they yeah. and I, I mean that movie's comedy, but like at the <laughs> same time, I guess they were trying to go for if these people live on an island, yeah. and they've been cut off from what yeah. they were normally living in, yeah. they've like 
something's with them that's like a little, and they're eating fish and stuff. Yeah. And like, well, I think they, they just wanted to be a completely different race that we never seen before. So mm-hmm. they kind of like settled in this color. Their, for uh, their weaponry and stuff has all Aztec stuff yeah. to it too, like where they're crushing skulls. Yes. I, w- I thought the natives were fucking scary. Everybody like, go, the, cool. the old witch doctor? Yeah, the witch. With yeah. like her mustache and stuff. That girl's horrible. Tori Kong. Tori Kong. Even in theaters, I was like, yeah, fucking. <laughs> yeah. And this is the scene where she screams and we hear Kong for the first first yeah, time yeah the ship's crew rescues them from the natives and where the hell does the captain shoot the guy we don't know yeah and the guy is falling in slow motion it's while very, everyone is moving in normal it's motion. a very pg-13 kill even back in the theater i'm like where did he shoot him yeah. because like there's no like it had to be in the yeah. face right and of course he's falling in bad slow mo- or no he gets shot in bad slow motion it's the yeah <laughs> like where he goes back i love how like every version of king kong it's just like the natives see the blonde girl and they're like, oh, thank God, we don't have to sacrifice one of our own. Give just Kong grab her. Girl. <laughs> just yeah. grab her. Yeah. Just grab her. And like, hey, we kind of like our women. We have to sacrifice it, but can we just grab a random it, one? It's pretty cool how like when they come to rescue everybody too, yeah. it's like, okay, let's yeah. go. <laughs> I do like how the the uh, natives like sneak onto the ship. Oh, it's pretty like, cool. But it's, it's, the t- it's, it's different than the 70s where they just boat up and like, grab her and then boat off. I don't remember that version <laughs> yeah, that well. They literally are just like, hey, what's up, lady? And they grab oh, her shit. And take off. I do like the idea of like the pole vault. It actually reminds me of Tremors. Yes. <laughs> where they're like getting across. Yes, uh, but that scene's cool. Like in the waters, like all tense and whatnot. But yeah, it's just, it's taking us a while to get here. One thing that we should mention right around here is the awesome music in this movie. It's like James Newton Howard. From start to end. Howard da, da, da. Shore was going to do the music. Oh, is that who it was? Okay. Yes, uh, but I, had, I think they just had a uh, conflicting ideas on it For so he was like just do James Newton Howard well, he does a great job though the da, 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 da. Yeah. yeah he had to do it like real quick and he didn't he mentioned- have a lot of time to work on there's it. a lot of points in this movie where the music isn't really fitting but it's yeah. more impactful because yeah. like we'll talk about a the, specific the, the one scene yeah. yeah and um this is the same year he did uh, Batman Begins with Hans Zimmer you, yes and I remember the trailer for this had the Batman Begins mm. music in it I wonder I, how this all started. Like, why does Kong protect them if they feed they him might a woman? Think that. I yeah. mean, there is a cool part though. I mean, he shows up every time they do it. And I actually do like the fact that when he shows up here, it's pretty similar to the way he showed up in the 1933, as far as like the shot composition goes. Yeah, it's more animalistic because you see like a silverback just like yeah. drop in. Yeah. But uh. Oh, and I like instead of just like they tie her up and shut the door, they have like a they don't even want to go in. They just yeah, have this bridge that comes down. That comes down. <laughs> Like the drawbridge exists. I guess sometimes they have to go yeah, in because the bridge has a door, but you could tell they don't want to go in. We gotta go get some berries. <laughs> yeah, like, they're like, shit, we gotta go in and hunt. Yeah. Who's gonna go on the scary hunt. bridge? What are they gonna kill? They can't kill any of that shit. <laughs> They've got to be collecting like bamboo. <laughs> yes, like, they, they, yeah, when you see what's in there, yeah. you're like, oh man, that'd be the worst place Maybe to Maybe they hunt. could take down the bird. But yeah, like, they could probably take down the bird. <laughs> um, talk about excessive, like, this whole movie is built on like these interactions between Anne and Kong and they spent like an hour before we see Kong. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like, but when your movie is going to be built around this, you want them to show up a little early. I wonder if this film had been made today, would they even release it? With the way that they like are such strangleholds on like blockbusters, yeah. they're like, this isn't a blockbuster. What did you deliver? Did you deliver a maybe quality if it movie? Was, if it was Peter Jackson, <laughs> they, they may have given it, it, letting it slide. But even if it's he, a director who's won the studio's trust, but even in the Hobbit films, he goes so overboard with yeah. action sequences and things. Yes. That, that, so you got to wonder, like, well, th- these days he can kind of produce his own stuff. Like the beginning of the Hobbit, even the first, and I think the first two Hobbits are completely serviceable. Like, yeah. The opening, you've so got, do I. you've got the smog attack, and yeah. like, and like that was not the beginning of the Hobbit. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, and then they include the entire wargs chasing yeah. them in the. So yeah, I you got to think about this. You don't see Kong until like an hour into the movie. Yeah. You're probably like, oh, well, this movie's. And I bet you that's why Skull Island. They're like, you're showing him in the first fucking scene. Yeah. And then 20 you're, minutes later, he shows up again. You're playing Fortunate Son. <laughs> <laughs> like you're doing the napalm. And Kong looks great. Yeah. Still to this day. Yeah, it it's great. a very good. Effect. Now we were watching on DVD, but I do have the HD DVD that a fan sent in, so I will watch the HD DVD. That was the only movie I remember they heavily promoted was King Kong. Yeah. on HD DVD. I don't know if it even works. As fan uh-huh. fans are telling me that like Warner Brothers, they rushed out a lot of these because they made it. The HD DVDs, uh, they rushed out a lot of them, and whatever 
like factory or whatever they use to press a lot of these, like the DVDs don't hold up. Oh, so there's like, like they, even more they, advanced disc rod. Yeah, something. they like yeah. there's disc rod and whatnot. Yeah. So I have someone sent me their entire HD DVD collection. I'm gonna go through them. How many were they? <laughs> How do you a do? lot. Oh, okay, uh, right. so I have an HD DVD player. And then someone else sent me the HD DVD player attachment for the Xbox 360. I'm That's gonna, right. You have I'm going to test out both and you see if that. they work. Now, this is our first extended scene. So you want this movie to be about Anne and Kong. We want to humanize Kong and show the relationship. Sure. Good idea cutting this particular scene out. Because we've we we've just gotten excited. It's a shame. We be see Kong. We got a little bit of a glimpse of him. We know there's a chase on. We want to go back to Kong. And I agree with you. They should have cut the scene out. But yes. this, this this furthers an even weirder problem with this movie is every mm. scene they cut out is actually a good scene. Yeah. Like uh, the Ceratops scene that they designed. I, I have it here. It's a kind of Ceratops. Oh, okay. <laughs> it's, it's kind very, of Ceratops. It, I'm sure it has a name. Uh, but yeah. the, the Oh, they all have names like the Vanatosaurus. Vanatosaurus. Yeah. The yeah. Stastosaurus. Yeah. But like. The idea is that these animals have continued to evolve yes. on the island. Which yeah, because they're not quite dinosaurs. Really cool. And he made a choice. They were like, are you going to try and make them more accurate? It's like, no, nah, we're just, they're moving No, monsters. because this is a remake of King Kong. Yeah, so like, no, I like, want to make the gorilla as lifelike as possible, but all the other ones well, are just movie monsters. Remember in the original, they, they kill the stegosaurus that's coming that, That's what this scene that's is. That's what this scene is. But I mean, it works for the original because the original is a little faster. realized. Yeah. Similar to the book Jurassic Park, where the the sick stegosaurus was swapped out with a triceratops. Oh yes, I wonder if he intentionally did oh, that. It would be pretty funny if it was. Um, but yeah, they fight the kind of ceratops and they kill it, uh, and then we cut back to Anne hmm. again. Yeah, you're right. It breaks up the action too much. Yeah. Uh, but yes, Anne. So what we're meant to believe here is the women on the island. They know they're being sacrificed, so they don't put up a fight. Kong like beats them up and right yeah them yeah yeah because this is like whatever agreement they've made like feed me a woman but and Anne, I'll leave you alone so she's the pit of all the dead bride of Kongs but by the way wasn't that in the Jessica Lang movie isn't that how she got away from Kong's hand because it's been years since I've seen that because there's a scene in that one where she sees the corpses right Jessica Lang so. when she's in Kong's hand I don't think so oh there's not what am I conflating well there? now I have another excuse to rewatch Kong 76 go ahead <laughs> Uh, but no, so she's the one who fights back and it confuses Kong. He's like, how are you? Why? Why? Yeah. This Whereas is older versions, you kind of imply where he's like, oh, he likes the pretty white lady and her blonde hair. And then you bring in the I, whole yeah, we, question. Yeah, we, we talked about that. I had heard someone say that and I never thought that way about the King Kong story. I don't even think the original movie is meant to have that I racial tone. I don't think it tone. is either. I think yeah. people attributed a racial thing to it. Uh -huh. Uh, there's definitely races who probably watched the original King Kong going, I know what they're saying. And then <laughs> Mary C. Cooper's just like, I wanted to make a monster movie. Yeah, I uh, someone had brought that up and I was like, I've never thought of that story like that at all. Yeah. So that always, it's weird because you don't want it to like. I don't think that's what it is. I don't think I it think is either. people have interpreted that way. Right, yeah. Either because they want it to be or they think, whatever. Mm. But in this version, how they get around it is like, yes, she doesn't know what she's supposed to do. Like she's not a native. She's not a native. She wants to live. <laughs> and so she's at, and he's thrown off by it. He's like, uh-oh, this isn't just like an object that I can have. Like, yeah. this is, what is it doing? Mm -hmm. So he's confused and he's like, he like keeps her around. He doesn't like, quite understand what's going, what's going, on, going on. Yeah, Because he doesn't have a relationship with humans. Yeah. He just All he does is wait for one to go on that little draw bridge and then yeah. grab it. And he like eats it or mm. throws it or something. Mm -hmm. And that's like, that's all he knows he's supposed to do. But yeah, so he's just like, do these things have feelings? What's going on yeah, here? Yeah. And I actually like that they cut the kind of Ceratops scene. Because this feels like the first time they're seeing the yes, dinosaurs. And, even and that's how it seems like it's being filmed. Mm -hmm. And then they're just like... I mean, it would still be amazing if you saw a different dinosaur, but it's like, this isn't the first time you've seen well, it. Well, don't forget the great line of, uh, there's only one thing in the world that could have made that footprint. <laughs> the abominable snowman. <laughs> Which I got to laugh out in the theater. Again, I do think Peter Jackson, Lost World Jurassic Park has that T-Rex imprint. Yeah. And I'm not saying he's intentionally like, but it, it, it was less than 10 years after. Yeah. And we're on a jungle island with dinosaurs and they're all gathered around the footprint. And I'm like... Yeah. Yeah, he makes it a joke out of it. I'm like, or was it a was it a reference to Godzilla '98 with the big footprint? No, I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> so that's one problem. They were very confident in their effects, 
And they were like, we're going to put it in the harshest sunlight. Yeah, not only which, that. Which Jurassic Park did, but it's a brief in Jurassic Park. We don't see the CGI. And they're running really quick. They're running really quick. And, and, and they don't linger on them in the sunlight. And the Tyrannosaurus that actually kills the Gallimimus yeah. is actually, like, doing a very cool attack. And, like... yeah. But this one, like, they were just a little overconfident and they don't look that great. I think the design is fine. It's the way that they all kind of, like, mulge into each other and mm. the fact that, unlike Jurassic Park, the only thing that is digital is the dinosaurs and those. That's like a backplate. Like, yeah. this is a live on Hawaii location running. Yeah. Whereas in King Kong. The it's all, all digital. And the only yeah. thing is is the humans. That's yeah. I love the real. idea yeah. for the stampede scene. I liked it when I was a kid. Uh, but, yeah, looking at it now, I'm just like them running on green screen looks so bad. It also makes you wonder if like these, why are they afraid of the little raptor creatures if like they're that big and yeah. if this happens often, how are they not extinct? Because they all fucking go off the edge of a cliff. Not all of them. But like nearly Only the whole them. hurt. I feel bad for the ones that fell off the cliff. I'm yeah. like, oh man. That's the thing. I feel really bad for these brontosaurus. It, I get, like, always fuck. felt bad, especially when the machine gun fire hits their legs and they all tumble on top yeah. of each other. Which looks incredibly yeah. fake with the people like flying in yes, and out of But I mean like the this, the idea for the scene is fun with these big raptors chasing them. And they look more like baby Godzilla. Yeah, I like the yeah. one that gets like stepped on. I, I remembered that. But That's like, no, you're right. The the green screen, like they're lit so brightly it's, and it, they're not blending in with it, the environment. It's like when I'm you, talking about the people. Yeah, the, the pe people, and they're clearly just running on treadmills, yeah, and it's very obvious. There's that scene where like they're all piled up behind. Oh I God, yeah. Either Jack Black or somebody comes sliding in from like. Yeah. Okay, he would have been crushed, and then like. He, look, he stands out like a sore thumb against all the dinosaurs. Yeah. It is cool how baby Godzilla comes up and he's like, D -d 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 yeah. and kills it. But like, it's it doesn't look no. as polished as a lot of... King Kong himself yeah. looks incredible in the movie. I, like, I love the idea for this scene, but it's just, it's one of those things, if I was looking at this editing, I'm like, I would have been like... You probably would have cut most of it. Yeah. I, I think it's cool. And it's one of the most memorable scenes in the movie because... <laughs> and I, you kind of do need the scene in the movie no. because it's followed up with uh, I don't remember his name, but the guy's like, take the tripod and like, oh, the cameraman. Right. He's like, take my tripod, and he gets eaten by the raptors. Yeah. Um. Oh, by the way, like, I guess they had to have raptors because of Jurassic yeah. Park. And we've learned uh recently that dinosaurs in bright daylight still look bad. So uh, yeah. check out our Jurassic World review. <laughs> um, I mean, I guess following. What do you King think looked better, Jurassic yeah. World or King Kong, with these bright daylight scenes? Because it's really close, in my opinion. Like, I guess you Ooh. could. I guess you could pick and choose like which. It, scenes it's a it's a shop by shop basis. Yeah, yeah, I think so yeah. too. Overall, they're kind of even. I think the the famous uh, that is probably one of the best daylight things yeah. in Jurassic World. Well, I think the t the T Rex the T Rex fight looks pretty good later on. That's at night though. No, no, no. In this, I mean. Oh, that's true. That but looks pretty good. That's completely different though, because I, yeah. I bet most of that is all CG. And, no, no, and, that is all CG. And because Anne is like. So, but I'm, I'm just talking blurred. about like it, as far as it goes with the CGI dinosaurs in the day, mm. the movies are kind of equal. Yeah, King it's Kong just, and it's Jurassic a case by World. case. Like you gotta let me know what scene. Yeah, well, I will say this: I think the Brontosaurus stampede scene is pretty close to the quality of like the gyrosphere going. Yeah, through the, like yeah. that's what it looks like. They they darken the colors of the dinosaurs in the gyrosphere one to kind of mm. help, but it didn't work. Not really. Uh, and tries to play dead. <laughs> yeah. just, I like, like the relationship the between her and King uh, Kong. But then it movie. cuts back to uh, Baxter, who's like, everything sucks. And in this scene, I, I have to see the theatrical cut. Because this scene isn't the theatrical cut. I don't remember it being here. Maybe mm. it is. But I think them starting to build the raft is not included in no, the theatrical cut. No, no. Because they're all just hanging out by the water. And he's just like, uh, well, we got to go back. They're taking off in nine hours. Yep. Yeah, and and they, they're like, what about Anne? He's like, look, she was nice, but we got to go. Nice girl, I'm, but we got to live. And I'm just yeah. like. Uh, yeah, you said yep. that. You're like, yeah, I agree with him. Yeah, you know, I, I'm literally being like, yeah, I don't really know this chick. Goodbye. <laughs> when they created the raft in the original, they've got the whole scene yeah. where the brontosaurus eats the guy out of the uh, yeah. the tree, which you can't do. Like, even yeah. though you want to be an authentic King Kong, like, yeah. people aren't going to, they're going to laugh at that yes. in like a modern movie. So they created this entirely new, actually, creatures with yes. these scorpion things, which are one of the main enemies of the game. Yeah, the like, video game, those scorpion things are yeah. ridiculous. Yeah. Uh, and then they created the, I believe it's called the Piranha the Piranha Don, yeah. Which is cool. Yeah, it's a big eel with a piranha. This face. is a great sequence. Yes, and I I wish it was in the movie, but well, yeah, it's it's weird. Um, let me see here. 
Yeah, so before that, we get Kong with Anne. Mm -hmm. And she does the thing where she's, like, entertaining him. She's doing the comedian. Yeah, right? and yeah. he's amused because she tried to sneak away and he found her. But then he gets embarrassed. I love his laugh. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but then he gets embarrassed because he tries to act all tough. But then a rock a hits rock him. A rock falls on him. He's great. And he does the yeah. thing. You ever see like a dog or cat do that when yeah, they you, get embarrassed? Yeah, you talk about they get embarrassed. Yeah, and I have, not my current cat. She doesn't get embarrassed by shit. She's awful. Uh, but I've had other cats that were like trying to do like a cool jump and then fell. And then people looked at them and they don't know how to feel. So they just run away. Yeah. And then they come back later and they're like. Did you guys forget I did that? Yeah. We all, that didn't happen. That was another cat. That I, was me. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I like the way that they played that off with the boulder falling because yeah. it, made, it made Kong like a pretty relatable animal. Yeah. And, but yeah. then, then it cuts back to them and it's like this long ass scene with them being attacked by the piranodon. Yes. Yes. Uh, and again, the scene is fun. But even this scene is dragged out like yeah. with the guy underwater swimming very Old slowly. Jack Driscoll doing the whole. Yeah, like, the awkward, awkward green screen yeah. in this too. It, it's such a cool scene, but I do, to I, it it had to be cut. Yeah. Like, the, yeah, the, the, the director's cut, it really is like we're establishing, we're trying to build Kong as a sympathetic character. We got to cut to monsters fighting these guys. Because. Oh, we're back to establishing Kong. As a, we got to cut back to monsters fighting it's these like guys. A, it's a juggling act because yeah. you've got like, are we going to tell the super serious King Kong drama like romance thing? Or are we going to make the monster movie Because we were talking expects? about it. Like, I prefer the scenes with like Kong interacting with Anne a little bit more. I do too. And I, the action scenes that involve him more so are, than the well, guys. It's, also, it's what you come for too. Yeah. I mean, but that being said, they're the, the other action scenes are cool and good. Yeah. They're well done. Yeah. The creature design in this is phenomenal. Yeah. Now, if they had sped up the first goddamn act, we could have had those scenes and it probably wouldn't have felt as it was dragging just too much. Just start off on the island. <laughs> yeah. This is like, if you just sped up the first act, you could have had all this still. Yeah. And I don't think it would have been as jarring. No. But for this, it's like, it took us a long time to get here to see Kong and yeah. you keep cutting away from Kong. And not even like a stylistic thing, like Godzilla, how it keeps cutting away from Godzilla. But right. It's kind of like a stylistic choice. This is more distracting from the mainline yes. story. Yes. I mean, that version is frustrated for different reasons. Mm, yeah. But yes, this one is just like, yeah, I'm just, what do you want me? Is this monsters attacking people or do I care about Khan? Right, right. You can have a little bit of this, but I need more of this. Mm -hmm. And it was they were right to cut it out. For the theatrical cut, but even the theatrical cut has a little too much. It shit. does. It's like a the stampede scene could have been trimmed down a little bit. Yeah, but like we said, it's they're not bad. Like they're not bad scenes. Like there's nothing in them where you're like, oh yeah, the, this was this was cut because it conflates with something else in the movie. Like yeah. like uh, continuity wise or something. Yeah. No, it's just we don't need it. No. And if you're trying to make the best movie you can, you get. It, you gotta leave that cool ass scene on the cutting room floor. Yes. <laughs> uh, but it does have a scene at the very end where Carl's just filming. It makes him look like a villain. He's filming this chaos, and then the guy gets eaten, and Lumpy's like, Did you get that? Just get that, did you? Yeah. Yeah. And it's just like, he is like, He's the bad guy. Remorseless. And the, his face is like, Like, yeah. he's just, he's just losing. That's it. evil, man. Uh, like, but yeah, then we get another extended scene. Uh, I mean, it makes sense why they cut this. It's kind of interesting where Anne is running through the woods. And then the men hear something in the woods. Oh, and they shoot at them. And Lumpy goes to shoot, and you're made to think they killed Anne. Right. But they really kill a giant bird? Yeah. A it, giant baby bird? It's a cool practical effect. It dude. is the only practical monster I can think of oh, in this movie. Uh, the, they had a practical raptor head that pulled that guy down. Oh, I didn't know yeah, that. Yeah, but like... But yeah, this it's a practical effect of this baby bird. And then like they shoot it in the head to kill it. I'm like, it's a little dark. Yeah, it's a also, little, that can, that's a little too dark for this I think version of the movie. That can kind of go because in the scene right before that, Lumpy's criticizing Carl. Yeah. And then, like, did Lumpy just kill Anne? So yeah. it's like, uh, yeah, you know what? Get rid of this. Scene. I get why they killed that. I don't even think you need to write that scene. No. It's, it's fake tension, it's, too, because you know he's not going to shoot Anne. But it's also like, we need Jack Driscoll to feel like some sort of urgency, and we need more cool creatures. <laughs> like, yes. so. Yeah. yeah, it is funny how in the theatrical cut they're like, oh, maybe we didn't need all these creatures. We just kind of need Kong. Yeah. And a f I mean, we need creatures. But you got to have the T-Rex. Yes. Like, yeah. I mean, that might have been a toy thing where they're like, well, we got to put out a toy of the piranha. <laughs> yeah, I, I wasn't like picking up any of the action figures. I remember. No. I wonder if some guy. I got like, that years later, but that's it. That's I wonder if, they're, if they did action figures of like this, the piranha Don and stuff. I don't know if they did. I wonder if they're like, where the fuck was this in the movie? Yeah. <laughs> 
I have a statue. I was. It's funny. I moved all my Kong stuff home, mm. and then we did this episode, and I had to bring it all back. Oh, uh, but yeah, I have the statue of Kong on top of the V Rex, like, fighting it. Yeah. So at some point, like, after Kong runs away, the guys are walking over a lot. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. And we get this in all three versions. It needs to be in the movie. Yes, it's um, a staple of the King Kong story. You only really needed this. I don't even think you needed the stampede scene to be honest. Probably but I not. Yes. Well, yeah. The cool thing about the whole log scene um, is that we establish <laughs> uh, Captain Hayes or uh, Mr. Hayes' death. Yeah. I always like this scene. I still like it to this day. Yeah. However, what happens afterward, I'm not a big fan of. Yeah. Uh, Choi dies. Yes. The log. He is, makes it in the original. Yeah. I think he had a different name in the original, but he makes it in I, the original. I do love Lumpy's like. Uh, you know, yeah. his serious care for like his friend. He's like, no! <laughs> um, but they, you know, he throws the log down. King Kong comes out of the yeah. cave and shit like that. Uh, yeah. uh, it, it needs to be in the movie. Now, I do think it's a little weird that they kind of cut away from that and go to something else. Makes you wonder where Anne is. Oh, yeah. During no, this then scene. afterwards they cut to Anne. Yeah. To break up that action yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. where she's being chased by uh, giant iguanas. Which are really cool. Uh, I remember, um, yeah, she sneaks into like a like a lot like a trunk, and uh, the one iguana gets eaten. I love it when the one gets eaten. You see the other one going like, nah, uh, yeah, and leave. It and then it, it's got this great transition, and now we rack focus on like uh, this the centipede, centipede coming in. My, I remember my friend in the theater almost throwing up when the antenna went in her mouth, and then the one's coming right back. And he was like. Bleh. Well, like it was the creepiest thing for him. Yeah, they should, and meanwhile, I'm like, there's more bugs. They should have. Those were what was supposed to make uh, Doctor Burke freak out in behind the waterfall in the Lost World oh, instead really? of the snake. Yeah, yeah. It was supposed to be a scene just like that, where it's like coming, I mean, and he like just freaks out, and then the T Rex grabs him instead of. Oh, it's a snake. It's a harmless snake. Yeah. Ah. But I mean, uh, it's cool that they freak her out. She runs out of the log and then you like go up and you're like, and, like oh, the, the, shit. The big like V-Rex, I guess, yeah, is yeah. still eating the thing. Yeah. Um, Very cool creature design here. And I think that yeah. this movie set the standard going forward for those Jurassic World movies. You were talking about because like, the teeth are all janky. Yeah, if you look at the teeth in the in the V-Rexes for King Kong, they're all like ingrown and grown out in weird fucked up places. And the Indominus Rex and the Indoraptor, even the Giga that they're putting in yeah. Dominion, they've gone for that. I guess Colin Trevorrow just really liked the screwed up look of the dinosaurs in this movie, yeah. which it looks cool. But like, yeah, uh, yeah the V-Rex comes out and starts chasing her. Yes. Uh, uh, and it's got like alligator like scoots. And stuff. Yeah, it's got yeah. Very small eyes. Yes. Yeah. Very tiny eyes. And you were saying how much cooler it would be if they used the Jurassic Park T Rex design. Yeah. Part of me was wondering like if they had just used the I agree, Jurassic Park T Rex. Because that, when you talk about iconic like creature yeah. design and you think about a T Rex, which is probably why they went in a different direction with this. Yes. But yeah. It, bad. And also licensing and like. Have you ever but, seen there was an old Japanese CD included soundtrack stuff? That came out and on the soundtrack. This is from Universal. Okay, and it has a uh, an image of King Kong, this King Kong, yeah. fighting the Spinosaurus from Jurassic Park Three. No, oh, you should check that. I out. gotta check that. That's out. very cool. That reminds me of uh, years and years and years ago um, when they were making Dragon Slayer. Oh, they took a picture of the dragon from that movie. I forget what it's called. Uh, and they took a picture of it fighting the Rancor. Oh yeah, for that, a magazine. Yes, for cool. years, people thought that was a crate dragon. It's like, no, nah, oh, yeah, dragon from, from Dragon, dragon Slayer. Slayer. <laughs> <laughs> this fight scene is long but and excessive, but I like it because it has Kong and our main character in peril, and she's in danger. Yeah, yeah. He's got to protect her. It's well choreographed. It's well choreographed. Yeah. I love the whole like. I mean, it is excessive that he did three goddamn T Rexes, but that's what people came to yes. see. Yes. Like that. Yeah. Yes. It, it needed to happen. Um. Yeah. And this scene, I don't mind. I like this whole. No, scene. It, it deserves to be in the movie for sure. Yes. And um, it was all over the trailers and shit. Yes. Yeah. Uh, I think the trailer, the later trailers maybe, but I think the first trailer just made it seem like it was one fight with the yes. T-Rex. I loved. I love this uh, image they've used. Like, yeah. For oh, yeah. Things. yeah. I, I always loved in the theater the first time I saw him rip the tongue out of that yeah, one T-Rex. Cool. Like, whoa, shit. <laughs> uh, but yeah, so he kills one with a rock and then they like tumble into a cavern full of vines. It's kind of like a Land Before yeah. Time situation. I love that but... like while he's fighting the one, the one is the back and it's trying mouth to is eat just him. open like a bird. Trying to eat like, her. Trying to eat yeah. Anne. And I, I, I told you I love the clap that they yeah. make when they're jaws. By the way, like, I just, 
They are movie monsters because I think any other animal will be more concerned about falling, or surviving. Than yeah. yeah, like oh god, oh god. But it makes for such a great scene, and you are remaking a monster yes. movie. So, um, but yeah, they make it all the way down into the mud. Mm. Uh, the one V Rex's face gets smashed on the wall twice. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, the the one V Rex that comes to eat her, Kong jumps in front of it. He does the famous jaw rip, mm -hmm. and of course he adds the tongue biting. And the tongue biting was great. And they pay tribute to the original where he's playing with the jaw. Mm -hmm. uh, but like, you find out that this whole thing was just him trying to be like, I am tough. You forgot about that rock thing, right? Because <laughs> he does the thing where he poses again. Yeah, like, that I'm is, cooler. That's pretty fun. I'm cooler than you. And she kind of looks at him now. He's like, oh, you saved me. You know, She's like, fuck. All right. Well, I don't All these be... other monsters could have eaten That's me. the thing. It's like, I don't want to be here, but if I am, I You're the hang best out thing you. to be around. <laughs> yeah. So Peter Jackson is obsessed with the missing spider pit sequence. As he King should Kong. be. So if you don't know, see, the original King Kong, the director was the opposite, where he went, my movie's too long. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna cut shit out of it. <laughs> I could probably use this spider pit sequence. That's why it's weird in the original that they like fall into the pit and then like Jack is climbing, but then we see the the, the two armed lizard come yeah, up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's like, what the fuck is that thing? And there were people who argued for years if it actually existed or not, and someone found a frame of like a spider in the pit. And now, I guess they, that's where the lizard came from. So when it screened, did they actually include this scene in 1933 in theaters? I don't think they did. Okay, or so maybe this was, they did. This was I know it was lost. It's like, definitely lost. I don't know if they screened it. He might have just trimmed it out. He did recreate it in stop motion. Yes, I was gonna say very when you cool. get the DVD, like Peter Jackson for the so he wanted to do this so he could do the spider pit sequence. Can you imagine what the producers are thinking? What are you wasting money yeah. on? And he's I like, think he did that on his own. I think yeah. <laughs> I think his production company did that on his own. But yeah, he decided like, hey, while I'm doing this, wouldn't it be fun to do the original Spider? And he got actors who hey, look the same. It's great. It is a great sequence. Like both yes. the stop motion that he did yeah. and in the in the final cut. In this and movie, they needed though. to include that in this in the yeah. final theatrical cut. It was funny that they don't have the two legged lizard, yeah. but then it makes it into Kong Skull Island yes. and it's the main villain. Yeah, the skull crawler. Yeah. It is so funny they picked that to be the main villain. I'm like, it is in King Kong for a second. I think he kicks it down. Okay, so here's what I think went through. Because Kong Skull Island came out in 2017. Yes. It was after Jurassic World. Yes. So they're thinking, fuck, yeah. we can't use dinosaurs or we're going to compete with yes. Jurassic Park is back. Yeah. That lizard. <laughs> they're yes. like, okay, that's the thing. Because <laughs> you notice that they went for more of the tone of the 70s, yeah. Kong, with the Toho yeah. uh, monster verse. So yes. they're like, that looks the that's what we're going to use. And those things are cool. They I like are, them. They're cool, yeah. Uh, I have a commentary track for King uh, uh, Kong Skull Island. Try Probably my out. least favorite MonsterVerse movie. I really, I saw it once. I just, I don't like it. I like it now. Now that I've embraced I'll, that. I've, it, I've only seen it the one time. I yeah. need to rewatch it. You rewatch it because once you realize that they were going for the schlocky Toho sort of thing. I, yeah. When you go in with that mindset. It's a lot better. Samuel Jackson saying, hold on to your butts. Yeah. John Goodman's death. In that There's movie. definitely still dumb shit in it. And yeah. the director will admit to the dumb shit in it. Yeah. Like when uh, Honest Trailers, when it was still good before they fired my friend Andy Signore, <laughs> who was completely innocent, uh, he won his lawsuit. Can't argue with it. <laughs> uh, they actually had him on. And he like, because he hated, the director hated Cinema Sins. So he went on Honest Oh, I think everyone hates Cinema yeah. Sins. So he went on Honest Trailers. Yeah, Jordan Bell Roberts actually a big Jurassic Park guy, too. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So uh, he went on um, Honest Trailers and he point it the flaws out in his movie and then he defended some of the people's complaints so yeah i have a lot of respect for oh her. i do remember that yeah, yeah so yeah definitely go back and rewatch yeah, it i don't hold new... anything against the, him or the yeah. movie itself i just i just didn't enjoy it when it yeah. came out neither I, did I, I will rewatch like it, i said yeah. neither did i until i rewatch yeah yeah it. the music is eerie it is very eerie because it's not matching any of the things in the scene it's just this constant like oh that's life on the island yeah yeah and it's like real creepy and there's just so many fucking bugs down there and, it, yeah, and the and scene makes you itchy crickets and, and i love that they can't even climb because they show that there's big crabs that'll come out yeah, and grab and you. yeah that's great but i think i talked to you about the creature design of the leeches is that what they yeah, are yeah those Whatever things are terrifying they're like graboids and yeah. Lumpy has one of the best PG-13 deaths yeah. like ever. 
Oh God, they fucking devour. And I, mean. I'm like, what a way to go. Yeah. Like when one starts getting his head, yeah. and, and I remember uh, seeing those like fleshy tentacles, and I was thinking, I'm like, man, if they ever did another thing movie, I wouldn't <laughs> mind right. you, CGI tentacles. You and then they it. did, and it was very bad. And we have a review for it. Uh, I think it's cool that he actually does take a couple of them out, yeah, like with yeah. the machete. The most unrealistic thing in the scene. Is him Tommy gunning the crickets oh, off for of him? Sure. I'm like, oh, fuck you. Nah, no. Probably the most unrealistic scene is Captain I, Hayes' body. With, oh, yeah, he's just there. And I hate the fact, I don't like... <sighs> See, this is where it ends up going. Jimmy grabs yeah. his hat, and I'm like... That's in the extended cut. That's not even in the theatrical oh, cut. That's what I... I didn't remember that, and I'm yeah. like, he grabbed his hat. That's a little morbid. You're not going to bury your, like, friend. You're not going to haul his carcass up? Yeah. Like yeah. Then nothing. Ha not, any, not even any of the bugs try to fuck with him. Like, yeah, that was weird because yeah. they needed the body there for that scene that they then cut out. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, the one good thing I do like in the scene is that Jack Black just loses it because the film. All oh, gets, he goes crazy. The yeah. film gets exposed and ruined, and yeah. he thinks he's ruined, so he just beats the shit and out. He's of like all the fighting bugs all the bugs and shit with the with like the broken tribe. He's yeah. like, ah, it's crazy. Uh, but they get saved by Bruce Baxter, <laughs> which is a great comeback because yes. he's like swinging down like an old like 1930s action. Yes, because uh, earlier he's like heroes don't look like me in the real world. They, they have got a pot belly guns. and a yeah. bald head. And <laughs> Uh, but yeah, so he comes back, they save him, the crew saves them for some reason. And for some reason they didn't realize Angle that. Horn should just be out at this point. He's like, the boat's fixed. Fuck all of you. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's also funny that none of them realized Jack was climbing up the wrong side of the wall oh, <laughs> until yeah. he gets to the top. Yeah, so and Jack Carl does. Carl Denham's fucking psychopathic, too. Because Carl realizes, like, he's going to bring Ann back. Yeah. And the gorilla fo will follow. And he convinces Anglehorn. He's like, we could trap this gorilla and make a ton of money. Dude, from he's it. evil. He, he is. He is evil, bro. He is. He's um, fucking Satan. <laughs> <laughs> Kong takes uh, Anne home. Mm -hmm. And this movie references other movies that were inspired by King Kong. Uh, and of course, I'm talking about this. Him bringing her home and showing her his dead family that he still lives with is from Ega. Uh, the Richard Keel classic about the caveman who lives in the desert. Sure. <laughs> and he kidnaps Roxy and he shows he shows her the skeletons of his family who are just paper mache, but they're there yeah, <laughs> and right. he still talks to them. Yeah, it's kind of sad because they were like talking about like this con. Like gorillas are supposed to be social they live animals. in troops and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. And so when you have one in isolation, you've seen in like zoos and stuff. They, they like, get sad. Yeah. Like I don't yeah. even watch Tiger King. Or, but they you know, talked about how they yeah. he had the two chimpanzees separated. And then we're taken out of his custody. They like embraced each other because they wanted to hang out. And he's like, fuck, I deprived them of like this growth. <laughs> so in the Kong and this, he's for whatever reason, uh, yeah. he doesn't have his family. They've been killed or whatever. They all died in the cave, it looks like. Either that or that's where their bones are just kind of being collected by him. Yeah. It's interesting because I don't remember there being that many skeletons. Yeah. I remember there being one or two. But then you see the movie... Is it in the theatrical cut? Not yeah, just, yeah, it's in the theatrical there's cut. There's like five skulls, so like there's yeah. a lot of I like how bodies. they reveal the one. Like you see it in the corner. Yeah, like as leaning. Kong's coming in, and then he moves, the sunlight lights it up, yeah, so you yeah. see it. Uh, and also while he's there, there's a bunch of scary bats in the cave. Uh, but they look. he looks out into the sun at the top of this cliff where he looks at the whole island. This is where you can see that Peter Jackson's retooling some stuff from the original because you've got two fight sequences that yeah. are cut from... Uh, this film that are in the original. Yeah. When he's going through the cave, there's the plesiosaur yes. snake creature, which he doesn't fight in this movie. No. He just, you know, peacefully walks. With, I guess because you've got so many other fights. He just had stuff. like a bunch of fights, especially in the extended three version. T-Rexes. Yeah. And then they cut the Pteranodon fight and instead yeah. have the bats and that's how Anne gets away. And yes. Like, yeah. Uh, but I like them just sitting, looking at the sunlight. Yeah, it's a just, good thing. He feels weird because he's like, I have something to hang out with now. Well, he's also... I like the idea when you see the corpses of all the other King Kongs mm. that like he's got all these scars and like yeah. all these and you realize this is a dangerous place to live. Yeah. He's the only gorilla left. Yes. <laughs> like they're all dead. I don't know how they died, but presumably from other fights. I'm guessing they get something. into fights with like everything. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, so they have a nice scene where they just watch the sunset. <sighs> All this ruckus uh, freaks out the bats. And they go who crazy. then fly out, and then Kong starts fighting the bats. Yep. And he gets distracted by them, and they grab onto a bat wing and like. Yeah, well, I like how they're sneaking on the vine, and then he's grabbing the vine. But then oh yeah, that's a great way like, we're pulling it back up. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, and I like when he's just roaring off the cliff. He's like, "Fuck you! Give me back my lady!" Yeah. 
So yeah, the, you're right. They, yeah, it's so excessive. They could have just climbed down a vine. Yeah. They had to just jump on a bat and then fly into a river. It's a little ridiculous. <laughs> uh. <laughs> um, but yeah, they make it back to the wall where this big trap is being set. Mm. Uh, and they have this big fight. Like he comes on the wall, he breaks through the doors. Uh, he doesn't just set. Oh my them. god, that was badass. Yeah. Even in the theater, dude. Because you've got all the people on the other side, and remember, Preston like yeah. does it early. And yeah. uh, King. Kong, oh yeah, and he gets hit with the face. I think I always wanted to see the Jurassic Park gates again. Because yeah. at this time, you talked a lot about yeah. how like this really did itch that scratch after Jurassic scratch Park. Scratch that itch. Yes, <laughs> after Jurassic Park <laughs> went away. Uh, Because we Jurassic Park three is like four years ago at this point. Yeah, and we this was the last time for a while that we got a proper dinosaur movie. Yeah, so we were talking. We got movies with dinosaurs in them, like the Land of the Lost remake. But that was a series. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. There wasn't something like this, like this PG thirteen action until Jurassic World again. And like we were talking about how again this movie was ten when that came out. Now it's almost twenty years old. But this was. Exciting! I always wanted to see a T Rex or something burst through the Jurassic yeah. Park gates, and when but I, when Kong fucking like yeah. launches, and you know all these dudes are like they are not like yeah. uh, well matched. I uh, think there's an extended shot where he like shatters a house that's there. Yeah, the natives they don't get involved. <laughs> oh, the natives are gone. Yeah, they're like fuck this. In the original King Kong, the famous thing where like he breaks through and yeah. like, but uh, they they're not fucking with. Him. <laughs> they're no, like, they're yeah. not gonna, man, those poor natives they left the. And all oh my god, now their gates busted. Their gates busted. Now anything could come in and kill them. <laughs> I never thought about that. Yeah. I talked about in the in the 70s <laughs> one, they're probably thrilled Kong is gone cuz I'm sure there's other Oh, mon- take him. Yeah. Sure there's other monsters on the island, but it doesn't look like there's many. But yeah, that's the problem with that movie. Yeah. There's just a snake. But yeah, yeah, I remember in that movie they're like, "Oh, those natives, we took their god. They're just going to be drunk losers." No, I think it's they're like, going to be very happy. Or they're going to be able to actually reuse all the resources on their island <laughs> gonna, for the first time yeah, ever. The ruins and shit. Yeah, yeah, they're like, "Hey, we can actually like go in there without being eaten by yeah. a gorilla. Let's hang out." Let's yeah, or a snake. He killed yeah. that thing too. I mean, sure, there's probably other giant snakes, Could but be. like look, look at all this greenery we can actually have access to. <laughs> the scene is really like tragic where he's just trying to get to Anne and get her back. And she, she understands she can't be with him, but she also doesn't want him hurt. Yeah, and they do the great chloroform uh, yes. reuse, but I, and they, they also, try to like hit him with the chloroform, but it's not strong enough. Yet. Not quite. But yes. I love the scene where he bites that guy's head off. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, he just like bites him because he does, he was biting people in the original. Apparently, I don't know if they filmed it or if it was meant to be there, but apparently there were they were gonna have a cameo with the hobbits here. Oh, there this were a bunch is of crewmen, where they were. Okay. There were a bunch of crewmen who were going to die. I think it was here. And it totally could have worked, but I do think it would have been distracting. Who was it? Was it just Frodo and the... I think it was all of them. Oh, the was it Sam? But, you can't kill Sam. But, not. Well, I mean, not as the hobbits. They would just be the actors. I know, but still, you, they're, if they're all together, yeah. you're supposed to make the connection. But, um... <laughs> Yeah, I was thinking about it. I'm like, that would have kind of taken me out of the movie. Yeah, I wouldn't have taken it seriously either. Yeah, because this is supposed this to is be the most like turning point traumatic scene that you. Yes, get. this is like I'm, I'm invested in the emotion of the Kong and whatnot, and, and, and a distracting yeah. cameo wouldn't work here. You got Jack or uh, Carl up on the rocks. He yes. delivers the final chloroform. Yeah, uh, after they stab him with the harpoon. Yeah, yeah. Which you think would that really be the thing that actually hurts Kong after all the tyrannosaur like bite marks? Yeah, because the tyrannosaur bones like that, the harpoon like that but it was like and it's it's barbed like, in his yeah, it looks like it's like sticking out where it didn't really go in that much <laughs> it probably made it in his bone or but something I, I do like the fact that carl's like we're millionaires boys i'll share, I'll share it with all of you and you so, never see those guys again <laughs> <laughs> like, fucking this guy is a cruel bastard we cut to new york very very uh harsh transition much much yes. like uh and san diego and the law we were Street. talking about the excessiveness it's yeah. it's shocking that he showed restraint and didn't do what the 70s did, where we get a scene of him and the I boat. do like it on the boat in the 70s, where he's yes. like causing a ruckus and stuff. But we just got right to New York, and it's the night of the big show. Mm. And we're made to believe that Anne is the star of the show, yeah. how they're cutting it. Uh, and at the same time, Jack is putting on a very problematic play. Uh, but it's got dialogue from when he had Anne earlier, and this whole thing, it's like he misses Anne. He thinks Anne's yeah. going to be at the show. Uh, everyone's excited. All the producers who hated Carl. Now, now they love, love him. him. Oh, you brought back the ape. Yes. Yeah. And Carl introduces the show. And he's like, ah, yes. Uh, he was tamed by a girl from New York. And everyone cheers. Yeah, you mentioned that was probably something added in because of 9-11. It's still, post, it's still early post-9-11. Girl gotta, from New York. Yeah. yeah. 
I, it's not quite the uh, scene in Spider-Man. You mess with one of us, you mess with all yeah. of us. It's like, ooh, that was added after the fact. <laughs> um, <laughs> by the way, the show sucks. Like, it's cool to see a giant gorilla, but if you think about it, like, they open up the curtain, the gorilla's just like, eh. Uh. Feel a little bad for him. Yeah, I mean, just supposed to. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's just like, eh. I'm I do sad. like Bruce Baxter running out there in his safari. He should have had the mustache. Yeah, it would have been great with the mustache. It would have been a great payoff. It's funny with that character, too, because they kind of go in a direction when he saves everyone that he's yeah. like redeeming himself from the narcissistic Hollywood tendencies. Yeah. But then he runs away at the end. <laughs> like, yeah, well, he's other people can deal with it now. Yeah. Um, but yeah, and I like the show that they're putting on. And again, again, a little excessive. It's like, yes, Peter Jackson, I know you love the original Kong. You didn't have to pull out the original costumes and the music yeah, and yeah, recreate yeah, yeah. a scene from it. <laughs> You're already remaking the movie. But yeah, like the the chief looks like the chief in the original and the music from the original is playing there. Mm -hmm. And I have it here. Kyle Chandler didn't dance enough in the new Kong movies. <laughs> I like his I like his gorilla dancing in this. Yeah, it's kind you of should, fun. They, the, the next movie, they should have him dancing with King Kong. You think they'll do a son of Kong one day? Probably not. Bad. They almost did that World War One thing. I don't know. No, nah, no. Yeah. Nah. Um, so Carl picks the worst time to take pictures on stage while the presentation. While happening. the play is still going yeah, on, this is not a pictures. good play. Yeah. It's very weird. Uh, oh, and we find out Anne's not there. Mm -hmm. She and is. Kong's distracted from that. He's yeah. like, you're not Anne. Yeah, so we see Anne's there, but then because the movie is excessive, we have to cut to her in the other show. Where she's all doing what she always loves. Slow motion. It is very. This is the part of the movie where I, in theaters the theatrical cut. Even yeah. I was like, okay, I've seen King Kong, Peter yes. Jackson. I got to pee really bad. He better yes. start climbing that tower. <laughs> like, <Yes. really? laughs> you know what I mean? Yes, and it's like, like a slow motion, sad song scene. And it's like, and Jack I mean, I mean, sure, show the reveal that she's not actually there, but it didn't need to be filmed like this. Like, yeah. I didn't need to go see a tap dancer during, to break up this action. Breaks out of the chrome steel. Mm. I like that. He's like, it, these are chrome steel. And he breaks and shatters out. Shatters it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, because Carl does not know the riddle of steel. Yeah, yeah, yes, it's, it's flesh. <laughs> yes. He, the, the Kong subscribes cuts, cuts to James Earl Jones Doom. like, I knew it. <laughs> yeah. I like him chasing uh, Adrian Brody throughout the streets in the car. Fucks his car up pretty good. Yeah, well, I like before the car, he's just in Man he's in Times Square. And I was telling you, when I saw this movie earlier that day, I had been in Yeah, New York, you were there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm like, oh, it's funny. And then I go to watch the movie, like, I was just there. <laughs> um, but yeah, I like that he's just digging into the bus, just grabbing people out. This stuff is great, but it is yeah. too much. It's too, at this point in the movie, it's a little too it's, much. We're well into the third act. And like, I, mm. I don't think Peter Jackson understood, like, because we know what to expect going in, we've seen the original movie. Yeah. We are looking forward to the final climactic action yeah. sequences. Of, and when you add on top of that military trying to like, yeah. not only get Kong, but Kong reuniting with Anne, yeah. it's like, all right. This movie, we you already overdid it with like all the. That's the thing. Like, you did overdo it with the island, and luckily he cut a lot but out. The island, everything was so fucking cool. If he had just a quicker first act, we could have had the stuff of the island. We could have separated where it's like first act is, we're gonna get to the island. We're there. We meet Kong, and yeah, then yeah. you have like the island segment, and then the New York segment, and then the New York stuff is kind of like an afterthought. But then he also wanted that to be big and loud and long. And it's crazy because like every time I've watched this film, when they're like on the ice and everything, I'm like, all right. Yeah, so he, all right. So he beats all up he beats right. up Jack and just and just happens to be there walking in slow walking motion. Walking in very slow motion, coming back to see Kong. I and guess. they use this in the trailer. And it's cool for the trailer, but when you're watching this. This is action. a well-made movie, by yeah. the way. There's a great shots, great musical integration, yeah. but uh but yeah, he grabs her. I don't know why she would even entertain this. Like, yeah. I know she cares for Kong, but at this point, she's like, no. Yeah. Sucks for him. Um, Let me just lead you down that path of death, Kong. Yeah, but then, yeah, <laughs> she's... Like, shit. Yeah, I don't know what her plan is here. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, they do the ice skating thing where he's all happy. Yeah. And the, the that was the scene in the theater. I was like, I gotta go to the bathroom. Yeah, the, mil the military attacks him. There's an extended scene right after this. Which I had never seen before. Where this military guy's like, These, uh, this gorilla's taking over the city. No, damn dirty eight. We're going to get him. <laughs> I don't want him in my city. We're going to show him that. And then Kong just like knocks the Fucks truck up and the kills truck. all of them. We cut its ugly head off and we ram it up at the That would have been a good scene it, for the Hobbits. It, oh, yeah, <laughs> it is funny. 
but it takes away from the seriousness of what's going yes. on, and it's kind of like, and, yes. it, and it, it's straight up Peter Jackson humor. Like, yes, uh, but it didn't need. But to it be really, it. it's a little too late for this kind of humor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The movie at this point is a little too serious. Yeah. Where like the humor. Well, this stuff. is the climax. Like yeah. you're sub- you're not supposed to have any goofiness yeah. going on right now. I felt really. B- I always feel bad, like when Kong dies in this movie, because yeah. he really like you can see him. He's he's dying. Like yeah. when he's like. Well, they. On. <laughs> They fucking at some point they almost trick you into thinking he's gonna make it. Yeah, because he because he he like shatters the one plane. I look when he grabs the one plane. Oh yeah, and that's on the you know poster. And it, yeah, that, I, I've always loved that scene. I was like, oh, I'm waiting for him to sling it because yeah. like when he grabs that one plane and slings it the other one. Like, I do like badass. They only show, show the planes like wings folding and it just falls into a fucking plane. cool. And by the way, we were talking. I'm like, wow, the CG really holds up here. Mm. Like it, like shockingly, still holds up. Like the the, the, the CG, city and everything. Yeah, the CGI model with Kong alone. There's like yeah. a lot of close ups in some of this stuff. Yeah, and he's got Anne with him. Yeah, and it looks really good. Yes, yeah. uh, some of the green screen with her could be dodgy, but like all the stuff with the planes and the city, I'm like, this still looks phenomenal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Usually, you go back and you watch these movies, and you're like, eh. Uh, they did a great job on yeah. this this final. This is. You know the most apart from the T Rex uh, yeah. uh, fight, you, uh, you're looking forward to the the Empire State Building. Yes, scene. Uh, but yeah, he tragically dies. Yep, and it's very off. very sad. Yeah, and it is pretty sad because you like you hear the heartbeat and everything. You see like his eyes roll back, and then like and then he falls off, and it's like oh buddy, yeah, that's a bummer. Yeah, that that shot of looking down while he's like yeah, yeah it's, it's like really slow with the planes coming. That was the one time where slow motion's actually needed <laughs> yes. like in the movie. And the music like gets drowned out there, mm-hmm. which I like, and she's very sad, and then she hugs Adrian Brody. Yeah. Now, I what do you think about the scene where all the like military people are like uh, getting their picture taken with the dead body of Kong? And I mean, everything? it's tragic. Yeah, it makes sense. But now, I mean, now now realistically, they should all be covered in blood and entrails. <laughs> you, you know what would have been a good twist for this? What? He should have fallen on top of <laughs> Carl Denham. That would have well. The Carl Denham equivalent dies in the 76 version. Mm-hmm. Yeah. No, the, yeah, he does. But yeah, I, Carl Denham, because he doesn't die in the original. They kept him alive, but it's like this version of Carl Denham. But this guy is is the bad guy, and instead he gets his... The way they cut it, they make it seem just like he's naive and overly ambitious. But yeah, the, when you watch the extended cut, it's like, he's this filming, fucker needs he's to filming die. He's filming people dying. This dude needs to yeah. die right now. He's like, oh yeah, that'll be great for the film. Like, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Uh, but they were all, they almost ruined the scene because they, well, you wanted, about they wanted a Fay Ray cameo because yeah. she was still alive at the time. Nobody would have understood. And it was going to cut to an old lady doing the whole, it was beauty that killed the beast line. Was that supposed to be Anne grown up? Like no, older? no. It was just going to be like random a ti- old lady. Titanic thing? Okay. Well, that's even weirder. Some random old lady just happened to be there. To say the line because she knows what she yeah. knows what's going on, <laughs> and they were talking about how they were going to go to her apartment and blue screen it. And I'm like, oh, thank God they chose yeah. th- that. That's terrible. I still don't like Carl saying it because mm-hmm. of what he's done to cause all this, and it looks like he he hasn't learned anything. Yeah, he's like, well, I'm gonna go shoot Son of Kong. <laughs> like, yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. If, if anything, he's just like he should have in this version of the movie. He should have just been like. Yeah, this is my fault. My bad. And, and, <laughs> and been arrested or something. The movie really should have ended with him going like, you know, I can't help but think I might be responsible for this. That's why I said King Kong should have fallen on top of him. That would have been good. I mean. That would have been yeah. good. Uh, but yeah, then the movie ends with a nice James Newton Howard score. Great music. It makes yeah. you sad and cry. Not me. I didn't cry. Uh, but other people cried. Two girls I saw it with the second time bawling their eyes out. I know my family, people in my family cried. Uh, but yeah, it's very, very sad and tragic and I really like it, but I think we can agree. Yeah. Yeah. It needed a lot cut out of it. Uh, it's, it's too excessive. It's great. And I love this movie and I personally I love too. a lot of that stuff, but I can see like, as I'm older, I'm like, this should have been trimmed too many characters. The fight scenes go on a little too long. I think this is the perfect example of like editing and narrative. Over editing. Everything else. And by the way, you could still have this movie editing would have saved this movie. Yeah. Well, yeah. like it's. Every scene is great, but yeah. when it comes to actually having a digestible, like really good structure, yeah, something we talked about, the Lost World really suffered from with that hard cut to San Diego, where yes. they cut the whole scene out where the T Rex wakes up on the boat and yeah. like kills people, yeah. And then on top of that, you've got Jurassic Park three, which we've talked about, like there is no third act. Really. Yeah, there really <laughs> is. There, and this movie, 
you've got this collection of incredible scenes, mm. but structurally, when you watch them all cut together, I said it felt like a rough cut. Yeah. Because it's like, dude, the story is b buried. It's yeah. like burying the lead in like a misleading article. Yes. You're like, what is this like? And this is the the era where they do put out extended cuts. They mm. do it less these days, they, they, which is upsetting. Yeah, it's unfortunate. And it, knowing that he he must have known he was going to be able to put out an extended cut. Knowing that he could have trimmed the theatrical cut a down little bit more, a little bit more. I think he could have had his cake and eaten it too. But like, you've got Peter Jackson coming off of not one but three. He it, got a little, little, little too eager. Not only were those films considered like great, yeah, those films made a shit ton of money. I, I just think we know now that he's not the strongest writer. Did he like, write? Well, yeah, he did write this with his wife, didn't he? Um, I think this movie's written fine. I think this movie was just too excessive. Like, yeah. I I really believe personally, King Kong. Yeah, uh, Frank Walsh, uh, Philippa Boyens, and Peter Jackson. No, I I mean he's a fine writer, but it's just like it's he doesn't over, know how to like he trim he, cut it trim pull it back. Yeah, he you doesn't know, like, know how to like simplify things. And we saw that with the Hobbit. I don't know if he wrote the Hobbit, but we saw like he did. I think write some yeah. stuff in the Hobbit. I think with which you really get it with the second. I think the second Hobbit movie is the best. Even though they include the very questionable relationship between the dwarf and the elf, and then they the whole third movie is that. Plus, yeah. dude, the Battle of the Five Armies in the book is literally like a couple of yes, pages. it's like nothing. And then in the movie, Bilbo gets knocked out and he wakes up and it's done. Yes, and in the movie, the dwarves have like a fucking Gatling gun and like there's like yeah. these creature designs which people. Well, that's Jackson because loves people and got so used to his long action-packed movies, and it's like well. The story was actually also good in those, and the characters were good, and you knew what to focus on. It wasn't that it was just long and had a lot of action. Yeah. And that's, that's what he did with this. He's like, I'm going to make it long and have a lot of action. It's like, well. The other thing, too, is that none of it's bad. Like, all, no. all of the action in this, all of the, like, well, special the effects. Well, the green screen and well, yeah, the, but the stampede I, is bad. I'm talking yeah. about the actual, like, there's nothing in it that screams poorly done. Yes. It's just, it's just too much. Too much. Yes. Like, you got to cut much. this stuff back. Um but yeah, I I still think the theatrical cut, even even though I've made all those critiques about the extended cut, yeah, it's very fun. Yeah. Uh, the theatrical cut's a way to watch this movie. There's an even better movie buried in the theatrical cut. Yes, but uh, uh, even with all of that being said, too much of a good thing still means that you've got a good thing. Yeah, uh, this is a good movie. Definitely think it's the second best King Kong after the 1933 yeah. original. Um, and I don't think anything else comes like at a close third for me. Mm. Like, I like Son of Kong and Godzilla vs. Kong, yeah. but those movies are, like, further down. Uh, for me, 76 Kong. I have to rewatch that, uh, but how close do you think that film really is in quality to this? Uh, equal, I think. You, do you <laughs> really think that? I don't know. No, it's... I, I have a soft spot for that one. Like, if you're going five out of five stars, 1933 original. Four and a half or four for this one. Yes, yes. And then what do you do? Like and then seventy six. Well, you know, like that's, a three that's out, of out of five. Okay. Uh, <laughs> no, no, no. Yeah, you're right. You're right. Um, there's a big gap in quality between the yeah, other. Kings. and the good films. thing with this is, I think we're done telling the story. I think we got it. You don't we think they'll it. ever remake it again? We did it three times. We'll make another fifty years. <laughs> I don't know how you're gonna top this version, <laughs> which is why I don't mind having this more action schlocky Kong. It's like we had the other version. We had it. I get that. I prefer this style. Like what yeah. they were doing in the original 33 version and the 2005 version. Yeah. That's my Kong. Yes. Like the serious Kong. Yeah. So. But I mean, after a certain point, it's just like, well, we got it. Yeah. What, you, what are you going to do? Do the story again? Yeah. Yeah. I get it. I get it. Yeah. yeah. Like it's what. <sighs> also. Probably the Achilles heel of trying to franchise King Kong is the fact that they tried to do that back in the day. And yeah. like, I don't hate Son of Kong, yeah. but Son of Kong, and they did not know how to make sequels back then. No, they did not. Like even beneath the Planet of the Apes. Yeah, like, that, son, that, son of Kong, they're like, let's sink the island yeah. so that we can't do it anymore. And like, and beneath <laughs> and the planet, like, let's gonna fucking nuke the world. <laughs> yeah. They were like, uh, so we're going to do a third one. Uh, there's a new ape. He's called Joe Young. And we're going to make Mighty <laughs> Joe well, Young. Even in King Kong versus Godzilla, they're like, yeah. Yeah, this is Pharaoh Island. Oh, because it's a different continent. Yeah, I know. Point. They're yeah. well, like they can't make a sequel. Yeah. You could technically say Son of Kong's connected because the fucking island's been destroyed. Yeah, <laughs> but like, yeah. 
Yeah, yeah. But yeah, I think it's a fun time. It's great. We really enjoy this movie. It is it is too much. It is too excessive. I definitely think for, even though it's too much and way too excessive, it, you're watching filmmaking like genius yes. on display here um, all around. This is an example of having too much creative control. Sometimes. This was his passion project. Sometimes having a producer to reel in some ideas can help. Yeah. Uh, I know everyone thinks producers just are the bane of the universe and, and they like ruin things because a lot of times they do Spielberg but gets, there are there are occasionally times where having someone to push back on your ideas we saw it with the Star Wars prequels when the director has free reign to do whatever he wants sure like, and well, then the sequels are the opposite but yeah like, it's like you need someone to push back on some of your ideas in, uh, like, hey yeah I, I, these are a business yeah the, you make movies to make money yes. and you talk about like producers having that like final say or control which Peter Jackson had ultimate control in this movie yes uh, Spielberg stepped in a lot for Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom yeah originally that movie was supposed to be in London okay. the whole thing was going to be set on a boat oh. actually transporting the dinosaurs to okay. uh, the place Originally, Malcolm was going to be on the boat trying to sabotage it. So oh, they yeah, don't you told get... me about that. Yeah, that didn't make any sense. Spielberg was like, no, 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 no. You can't. It, it'll take too long to get to London. It's going to be boring if all the dinosaurs are in cages in the boat the whole yeah. movie. California's way quicker. I went yeah. there in the Lost World. Like, <laughs> like, so sometimes a producer can step in. And it's. I guess that's debatable if you think that. I actually think a Resident Evil Revelation style oh, Jurassic cool. Park movie sounds cool. Yeah. But, uh. Yeah, someone probably should have stepped up here and been like, hey, Peter Jackson, we're already in New York. We don't need another hour. <laughs> yes. <laughs> like, <laughs> yes, we can speed this part yeah, up. Yeah, yeah. Really speed this part up. But yeah, I'd say check it out. And you know what else you guys should check out? My good friend Clayton's channel. Oh, yeah. Well, you can find me, uh, Clayton Fioriti, on YouTube. I talk about Jurassic Park. I also have a second channel called Dragon Curve where yes. I talk about everything. So, yes. Yes. Yeah. It's a very, very good channel, and I highly recommend well, it. Well, thank you so much, Very Famous Tony. Yes, unless this is months from now, and it's now bigger than mine. Then, In which case, do not subscribe. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. I hope by the time this comes out, I'm finally equally as famous as you. You already are. Yeah, You've been I, in Cinemassacre the stuff The whole the, the bane of my existence is that I just feel like I'm never famous enough. Hmm. And what could change that is if you go to patreon.com slash hack the movies <laughs> and you donate uh, money to me, annual subscription, please, uh, um, then I would think I would feel more famous. Yeah. But if you can't do that, like, share, and subscribe, uh, download us on your podcast app of choice. We are on all podcasts. And uh, yeah, uh, you guys are great. Call our voicemail line, and we'll see you later. Do you think King Kong... The Peter Jackson King Kong tries to do too much. Is it too ambitious? Is it too uh, excessive? Let us know in the comments below. We are waiting for the dark souls of fighting games. Let us have it. We're ready. <laughs> Soul Edge has nothing on a lightsaber. <laughs> like, I'm sorry. James Earl Jones comes back. No. no. Oh, no. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I don't think kids trade games yeah. anymore. I need that sense of accomplishment and it wasn't there. And I think that that was a major flaw. The way they engineer these is just phenomenal. As much as you're into like the comics, I was very into the toys. So I was on like the message board all yeah. the time. Yeah. Remember to like, comment, and subscribe. Check out our other videos and Patreon page.